You know it's this. Take a perk and talk it and see. Money swallowing like six. Did it perfect to the kid. Got a million who's sick on my head. Got a million better put on the road. I just win. I know we got a million dollars. The devil that's it and I chip it again. Hello and welcome back, fellow anime lovers, to Manga Muse. I am delighted to have you join us once again in the world of fanfiction and fantasy. This is the fourth part of What If Deku Finds Power Puff Girls in MHA. Special note, this fanfic is written in a masterpiece of Periwinkle Frog on fanfiction.net. Do check and support the author too. Now smash the like, share and subscribe button for more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss such great parts. Thanks for the introduction. Now let's dive into the world. Bubbles had no plan of interfering. Mr. D. Aizawa had told the class to stay away when he went to fight the villains. That, combined with a belief that they would make things worse, made Bubbles stay away from the fighting, no matter how much she wanted to give those villains hell for messing with her friends. Her goal was to get herself and Hagakir back to the exit. But, as they approached the central plaza, they realized that the entrance to the stairs were being blocked by Aizawa's battle with the villains a battle which he seems to be losing. With still a ways to go to the actual plaza, the two stopped in their tracks as they witnessed a large monster beating up Aizawa. Once the weight of the situation sunk in, Hagakir gasped. Oh no, they're attacking him, and they're blocking the exit too. Oh man, what do we do? Bubbles barely heard the concerned proclamation as she stared teary-eyed with fear and despair at the towering monster. She couldn't let this slide. She shouldn't let it slide. Coming to a decision in her head, Bubbles started to walk forward with more determination, surprising Hagakir. Wait, Miyako, where are you going? Bubbles turned to her with serious eyes. To help. My sisters and Shoto were right. We have to help out. It's the only way. Hagakir was quiet before seemingly nodding. You're right. I'm with you. But what can we do? Bubbles pushed off the ground slightly, so that she was levitating. Go and check if Todoroki and my sisters have arrived yet. I'll take on the monster, she instructed. Hagakure let out an eep. By yourself. What if you get hurt? Don't worry about me. Bubbles interrupted, already facing forward with a glare. I can handle it. Without waiting for a reply from Hagakure, Bubbles flew towards the plaza quickly, gritting her teeth. As she approached the scene, however, she saw something. She saw a man with blue hair and hands over his body lunging for one of her classmates. Her friend, Tsuyu. Bubbles was best friends with the frog girl, one of the first friends she made, and the calm yet joyful girl she knew looked horrified as the man lunged for her. The two others, Izuku and Mainta, looked equally terrified, as it was clear that the man was coming for them next after he finished with Tsuyu. Bubbles can't let that happen. She won't stand for it. That was why instead of slowing, she doubled her speed, jetting her straight into the man's side and throwing him off his trajectory. The two rolled over each other until Bubbles was on top, pinning the man down with one hand, exerting her super strength. Don't hurt my friends. The others looked at them in shock, not expecting the sudden entrance at all. Miyako, Izuku exclaimed. Blossom and Buttercup stood up in the crater with wide eyes, as Bubbles looked around with a relieved look in her eyes. That is, until Tamira seized her wrist with his hand. The motion provoked terrified gasps and screams from the surrounding students, prompting Bubbles to look back at Tamira with wide eyes. The large hand on his face was slightly crooked from the impact of falling to the ground, revealing a furious red eye. Miyako, is it? I remember you. You're part of the Wonder Girls everyone has talked about. These stupid heroes, putting a kid on the battlefield. His fingernails digged harder into her skin, sending waves of nausea through bubbles. One single splintered crack ran down her wrist to her pointer finger, drawing blood to the surface. Bubbles took that as a sign to shove Tamira off her and jump back. Immediately, Bubbles looked at her injured wrist, only to realize that apart from the tiny crack in her skin and the fact that the skin on her wrist was a little gray, most of it remained unharmed. Miyako, watch out! He has a quirk that can disintegrate anything he touches, Suyu shouted. Bubbles continued to look at her wrist, speechless. Then how come it didn't affect me all that much? Just then, Tamura sprang at Bubbles again, to her shock. Quickly, she jumped out of the way while charging up and throwing a blue energy ball. Tamura easily dodged that before lunging at Bubbles and taking her down. 
Now Bubbles was the one on the ground, as Tamira kept her there with a knee. His hand was mere inches away from her face, the only thing stopping him from touching her being her own hands on his wrist, forcing the hand back. I'll hand it to you, little girl, you're strong. But, like your stupid teacher, you're not strong enough. Maybe your death will convince your sisters to drop the hero gig and spare them your fate. Bubbles looked up with terror as she loses her grip on his hand, and his hand grabs her face. Bubbles wrenched her eyes shut, expecting the worst. But, as some seconds go by, nothing happens. What? Tamura exclaimed in fury as he released her and looked at his hand. Just then, a movement catches their eyes, as they look at Aizawa, who was looking up with some difficulty and glaring fiercely, with glinting red eyes. It wasn't hard to piece together what happened. Aizawa had been able to look up at Tamura and cancel the quirk at the last minute, saving Bubbles' life in the process. Leave my students alone, Aizawa shouted bravely. And it was in that moment where all three girls felt a sense of endearment towards their teacher that they haven't felt with anybody except the professor. But the moment of happiness ended swiftly as his head was slammed down quickly by Namu, prompting screams out of the girls and their friends. Quick thinking, Aizawa, using your quirk like that. I'll give you that. Tamira mocked as he looked over, but still take heed that Namu can easily kill you when I give the word. Suddenly, two girls jumped up from behind Namu, taking the latter by surprise. Not anymore, Blossom and Buttercup shouted in unison. Simultaneously, they aimed a punch at its back, forcing Namu to fall off the pro hero. Blossom and Buttercup then fell to the ground on their feet, in fighting positions. After a few seconds, Namu turned to face the girls, and to their shock, it looked like it was unhurt which was very surprising, given how strong Blossom's and Buttercup's combined punch was. Bubbles looked over in fear as Tamura shook his head in mock shame. Girls, 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 when will you learn that Namu is not at your level, but way ahead of it? Your punches won't harm it, not with its shock absorption. Our little monkey friend figured you would try to stop it with punches. Guess he was right. At that, the girls tensed. Mojo, he was responsible for this. Meanwhile, Tamura was done talking as he swooped down on Bubbles again, the latter screaming. But at that moment, someone jumped into action, and it wasn't the girls. It was Izuku. Smash! he shouted as he aimed a punch right at Tamura. The impact of the punch connecting scent dust flying everywhere, the force sending strong winds in every direction. And as the dust cleared, it appeared that the punch hadn't gotten Tamura. It had hit Namu, who jumped in the way at the last second. Just like Blossom's and Buttercup's punches, Namu was completely uninjured from the attack. As it grabbed the terrified boy and Tamura went back to trying to attack Bubbles, it seemed like all hope was lost. That is, until a loud and uplifting voice echoed across the entirety of Aschi. Have no fear, for I am here. All Might had known something was off. He knew that when Aizawa and Thirteen didn't answer his calls, and he knew when things had been unusually quiet on their end. Something was going on at Asuche, but for the life of him, he couldn't figure out what. That is, until he decided he had enough and made his way over to the place. And halfway there, he ran into Tenya Ida, a student of Class 1A. At first, All Might was rightfully confused. Why did Ida run all the way over here? And why did he look so terrified and hysterical? But it was after a short moment of composing himself when Ida told All Might what was going on at the Asti. And when he heard the news, All Might was angry. Very, very angry. Which is why, after urging Ida to go back to Yua and get more heroes for backup, All Might marched the rest of the way there and bursted through the Us entrance. And things were a mess. A few students were cowering with an injured thirteen, becoming happy once laying their eyes on All Might. Some students were scattered who knew where in the Us, completely vulnerable, and a few were at the central plaza, fighting the big enemy. And some of the few happened to be those three little girls who he had first met and saved from the sludge incident. After announcing that he was here to help, All Might wasted no time in making his way to the central plaza. Some villains noticed and upon laying eyes on the number one pro hero himself, they panicked, which made it all the more easier for All Might to incapacitate them. He then took care of some goons who were starting to swoop down on Aizawa, who was already unconscious from his injuries. When seeing the teacher, All Might took a moment to apologize for everything, 
despite Aizawa not hearing him, before turning his attention to Tamira. Using his super speed, he threw Tamira off Bubbles, who sat up with relief and awe. Tamira, meanwhile, clattered to the ground a few feet away, completely losing the hand that covered his face. Once he was off, All Might offered a hand to Bubbles. Young Miyako, are you all right? Did he hurt you? He asked. Bubbles shook her head as she took the hand and stood up. I'm okay. I'm so glad you came, All Might. Once she was up, her sisters ran to her, enveloping her in a hug, while All Might used his super speed again to free Izuku from Namu's grasp, throwing the creature a few feet away like Tamira. And are you all right, Midoriya? All Might asked. After kneeling on the ground and catching his breath for a few seconds, Izuku got up. I'm fine. After that, the girls rushed over to him, as well as Suyu and Maita. That was a close one, I'm glad you guys are okay, Blossom exclaimed. Us too, you guys saved our lives, Ribbit, Suyu exclaimed before turning to Bubbles. I'd like to thank you specially, Miyako. If you didn't come in at the time you did, I would have been dead, thank you. Bubbles smiled wide. Don't sweat it, that's what friends are for. And thanks for trying to save our sister, Midoriya. That took guts, Buttercup remarked with a wide grin. Izuku rubbed the back of his head. Sheepish, I appreciate that, but I should be thanking you girls for showing up to the fight just in time. As the group celebrated though, All Might watched Tamira he was quickly grabbing his mask and putting it back on his face and Namu get up, to his despair. He then turned to the group urgently. I'm glad that you guys are safe. But the longer you stay here the more likely one of you will end up seriously hurt. I need you all to take Mr. Aizawa and leave towards the exit. Your class is waiting for you there. The group looked uneasy, especially the girls. But you need help. You're outnumbered. My sisters and I can stay. We'll whoop their butts, Buttercup exclaimed. All Might smiled a small one this time. While I appreciate your enthusiasm, young Kaoru, it's simply way too dangerous. I'll be fine on my own, and I have everything under control. Leave and stay as safe as you can. Without waiting for a response, All Might turned around and sprang towards Tamura, readying one of his moves. Carolina Smash but before the attack reached Tamira, Namu jumped in the way of him again, taking the blow instead. A bit shocked by the sudden block, All Might frowned harder in determination, aiming some punches at Namu. After two punches, however, All Might retreated, his confusion growing. Namu looked completely unaffected by the clearly serious injury-inducing punches, and, as it charged at All Might, it looked like it wasn't hurt in the slightest. Quickly, all Might evaded the punch and counterattacked with more punches, while Tamira laughed maniacally from the sidelines. You fool, can't you see? Your punches will never work with Namu's shock absorption. You can't hurt it that way. You have a better chance of defeating it if it lets you gouge out its flesh. All Might backed away from Namu a little before flashing Tamira a grin. Thank you for the advice. Now, you just revealed this guy's weakness. Tamira looked a little bewildered before shaking his head, a noticeable smirk on his face. But All Might didn't notice as he grabbed the waist of Namu before pulling off a suplex move, creating a large shockwave. Elsewhere, heading towards the exit was the group, Aizawa in their clutches. The slowest of the group happened to be the girls, as they were waiting for their opportunity to jump in if needed. So, they ended up seeing All Might's suplex move. Ah oh yeah, Buttercup shouted in glee. He's beating Namu's ass. I knew he would come out on top in the end. Blossom looked on in worry. I wouldn't speak so soon. I hope that's the case, but something tells me Namu's not done after that. Maita scoffed. All you girls do is worry. Relax. Kaoru's right. Mr. Big Guy's done for. But I do think Momoko has a point. Ribbit. Suyu replied, worried as well. You've seen how much Namu can take. All Might's gonna have a hard time, that's for sure. It was around that time that the dust from the shockwave settled, revealing a terrified sight. All Might had Namu on the ground, but something purple was making the floor beneath them sink like quicksand. At first, the sight looked unnatural. But then, Bubbles came to a realization. It's Kirajiri, she whispered. The group turned to her, confused, as Bubbles pointed with wide eyes. Kirajiri's warping Namu and All Might, she exclaimed. Buttercup frowned. Why the hell would he do that? 
Just then, as if answering her question, Namu's upper half emerged from the portal right underneath a bent over all might, and seized his upper half, burying its claws into his body. I see what you're trying to do, all might, Tamira taunted as he observed the scene, but, your little plan to bury Namu into the concrete won't work the same way someone burying you into concrete won't work. Face it. Namu's just like you in terms of strength. It's your counterpart. It was made that way. At those words, All Might released Namu's lower half and started to pull at Namu's hands, struggling to free himself. But the more he struggled, the more it appeared that he wasn't going to free himself. That was the final straw for the girls. No more standing by. It was time to jump in. Izuku, Asui, Maita, Blossom said firmly, looking back at them. Take Mr. Aizawa to the exit. We're staying. Wait, you can't go and help. It's too dangerous. Ribbit, Tsuyu exclaimed with concern. Buttercup grinned as she stepped forward, away from the group. Oh, please. Danger's my middle name. We can handle it, Tsuyu. Trust us, Bubbles reassured her. We know how to take care of it. Just go to the exit, and we'll meet you there after helping All Might. Before any of the three could react, the girls blasted away with their tricolored energy trails. After watching them leave to go fight, Izuku frowned with determination. You guys go, then, and take care of Mr. Aizawa. I'm helping. At this point, Tsuyu looked mildly annoyed. You can't, Midoriya. But before she finished, Izuku was running after the three colored trails, as Tsuyu and Mainta watched, Mainta threw up his arms in exasperation. Well, pardon us, we're not to blame if either of you get killed. Tsuyu sighed. Hopefully, they don't get killed. I don't want four dead friends. Come on, Mainta, let's go. In a rainbow blur, the three girls came closer and closer to the scene. Once they got close enough, Blossom shouted an order to her sisters. Separate and weave. Roger. Bubbles and Buttercup confirmed in unison. With that, the once singular trail separated into three, as all three went in different directions and swarmed All Might and Kirijiri. As he witnessed the sight, Tamura gritted his teeth. Kirijiri, he shouted in annoyance. Knowing what order Tamura was about to give, Kirijiri rose in front of All Might and Namu, his yellow eyes tracking the swarming girls, who were distracting Namu. On it, he said preparing to make a warp portal for them. Just then, he heard a shout. No. Kirijiri whirled around to see Izuku approaching fast. Completely forgetting the girls, Kirijiri prepared a portal to send Izuku away. But that was when a blast of sudden fire knocked Kirijiri off balance and completely stopped all portals, including the one underneath Namu and All Might. Once the smoke villain was down, a newly arrived Bakugu pinned him to the ground, Around that time, Kirishima arrived and sprung towards Tamura, who dodged the sudden attack. And what's more, Todoroki arrived just in time to freeze Namu, or at least half of it. Slowly, the three girls stopped swarming and floated in midair, watching what happened in shock. It's Bakugu and Kirishima, Todoroki too, they came to help, Bubbles squealed. Buttercup crossed her arms with a raised eyebrow. HMPH, they didn't need to. We had it handled. Tamura, of course, was furious. Kirijiri, you idiot, you let a student capture you? Bakugu looked up with a malicious grin. I figured out your secret, you stupid villain. This guy isn't all smoke. He uses the mist to hide his skimpy body underneath. Too bad the neck armor is so easy to see. Otherwise I would have never found out. Kirijiri squirmed in his grasp, but that only made Bakugu push down on him harder. Stop moving, you! Before I blow you up and send you to hell, he shouted. Kirishima looked shocked at the outburst. Bakugu, how can you say that? A true hero shouldn't attack a villain with death threats. Buttercup scoffed. I know right. Some kind of hero he is. Blossom looked at her sister in annoyance. You do the same thing too. Ah, yeah? Because I mean them, Buttercup blustered. Tamura gritted his teeth in irritation before seemingly calming down. I commend you on your efforts, weaklings, truly. But I had enough of playing around. Namu, free Kirijiri. With a nod, Namu pulled away from the ice, breaking the ice in the process and losing almost all of its right side. But to everyone's shock, muscles grew out of the limbs, restoring Namu to its original appearance. 
What the F? Buttercup whispered. It's growing back everything, Bubbles gasped. Tamira nodded his head. Precisely. You don't think that we wouldn't put back up quirks in case any of you got a drop on Namu, do you? Namu's always a step ahead, especially with its super regeneration. It's modified to take down All Might, even at 100%. With Namu fully healed, it then charged at Bakugu. But before getting close, the girls, not wasting a second, flew after Namu and threw it back from the two. The girls then landed in front of Bakugu and Kirijiri, only focused on Namu. All right, girls, it's showtime. Disarm formation. Let's go, Blossom ordered. After that, the girls blasted after Namu, who got up and let out a threatening roar. Quickly, Blossom inhaled and let out her ice breath, freezing Namu to the ground once again. Once it was immobilized, Bubbles landed, took a deep breath, and screamed. Her sonic voice came out in shockwaves, making Namu clutch its ears. With Namu defenseless, Buttercup ran towards it in a green blur before dishing out an uppercut. But as Namu reeled back, its eyes snapped open, trained on Buttercup. It then seized Buttercup's wrist before she could fall to the ground, to her shock and fury. As Namu grabbed her more securely, Buttercup's eyes glowed red, and she let out a barrage of laser beams at Namu, who moved its head out of the way, making the red lights hit the ceiling of the Ust. Blossom and Bubbles then came up behind Namu and pulled its head back together. As a result, Namu released Buttercup, reaching its hands back to seize Blossom and Bubbles. Buttercup flew up higher so that she was hovering above Namu's chest as he bent over to catch the evading pair. Buttercup then stuck her hand out with her fingers in a gun shape as green energy swarmed it. She aimed it straight at Namu's chest, grinning. End of the line for you, Namu. But before she could release the energy blast, something came hurtling in her direction and took her down. Not expecting the sudden attack on Buttercup, Blossom and Bubbles let go, dodging Namu's grasp. They looked at Buttercup, now on the ground, as a certain monkey pinned her down. Not you again, just quit it at this point, Buttercup shouted in rage. Mojo Jojo didn't look happy either. If anything, he looked furious. No way am I going to let you brats destroy my life's work. Who do you think I am? Just then, Mojo suddenly got pushed off with a surprised scream. It was Todoroki, as he looked over at Buttercup and extended a hand, which Buttercup quickly took. Mind telling me who your little friend is? He asked as she stood up. Buttercup looked at a reeling Mojo before sighing. He was the villain we were fighting back at the ruins zone. His name is Mojo Jojo. A real piece of shit. Kirishima then came up next to Todoroki. Then we'll deal with him. You and your sisters keep on fighting Namu. You might have a chance. Buttercup looked surprised at first before looking grateful. Thanks. With that, Buttercup ran back to her sisters and Namu, while Todoroki and Kirishima tensed. All right, Jojo Momo. You've done enough, Kirishima shouted heroically. Mojo got up, one of his eyes twitching. For the love of God, it's Mojo Jojo, you imbeciles. As he charged at them with his rocket boots and fought the two classmates, Buttercup joined the two sisters, who were watching Namu break free from the ice and regenerate his feet. What's the deal? Buttercup asked Blossom and Bubbles. Bubbles looked extremely irritated. Because of Mojo, we got too distracted. Namu's recovering from our attacks, and we can't stop him. We need something stronger, then, Buttercup exclaimed, glaring. Blossom nodded. That's what I'm thinking. If that's the case, let's finish this, Bubbles shouted bravely. As Namu charged at the girls, they came together. Bubbles and Buttercup both put a firm hand on Blossom's shoulder, their hands glowing blue and green respectively. The two colored energies snaked down Blossom's arms as she put her hands together, making a pink energy ball. Quickly, the green and blue energies mixed with the pink, creating a large, buzzing, and multicolored ball. After it was charged, Bubbles and Buttercup swiftly let go of Blossom, allowing Blossom to race towards Namu and transfer the energy to her hands. As she jumped up to Namu's level, she glared and put her hands together to make an X shape. Let's do this, Blitz Formation, X Form. After shouting that, Blossom slashed hard at Namu, a glowing white X materializing before Namu got blasted away, dust kicking up and clouding the scene. Blossom jumped to the ground bright-eyed at the fact that the attack worked. As the dust cleared, that confirmed it. 
Namu was kneeling, looking quite ruffled, as an X-shaped scar appeared on its chest. Only, it wasn't going away, and everyone noticed that as they looked on in shock. Would you look at that? All Might whispered. Bakugu frowned with annoyance and surprise, even letting go of Kirijiri in the process. How the fuck did they do that? Izuku came up beside him, wide-eyed. I don't know. Tamira was also someone who noticed Namu's sudden idleness to his indignation. You're not gonna take that, are you? Tamira shouted angrily at the creature. Hurry up and heal, you useless lug. Blossom crossed her arms and this time she was the one who was smirking. It can't. She said simply, You know, you've mentioned that Namu can survive physical attacks. And clearly, it turns out you're quite right. So, it's natural that we rely on another type of attack. Tell me, does Namu's miraculous super regeneration protect it from energy-based attacks? Of course not. It was obvious. It had only been a theory Blossom was developing when she and her sisters did the disarm formation. But, the Blitz attack had confirmed it. Namu was weaker to energy attacks than he was to physical attacks. And the clear change of Tamura's expression from anger to dreaded shock more than proved it. You, you. Without sparing another second, Blossom ran towards Namu as her sisters cheered her on. She still had some remnants of Blitz energy inside her, so she called it up to boost her speed and energy attacks. Then, she started dishing out rapid energy attacks on Namu, which slowly but surely weakened him. She knew deep down that she did not have enough energy to take down Namu entirely, and she couldn't get more since the Blitz formation was a last resort one-time move, as it drained her sisters of their energy. But that's why they have a number one pro hero on their side, who Buttercup and Bubbles ran to and told their plan. With a wide grin, All Might stood up while thanking the pair for their help. He then started to approach as Blossom fought Namo. Occasionally, Kirijiri, who was now free, started to reach some of the purple mist towards her to warp her away. Blossom, fortunately, was able to neutralize it before it got close. But the bad news was that she couldn't keep up this rhythm for long wearing Namu down while simultaneously keeping Tamura and Kirijiri back. And eventually, it became too much to bear when Blossom got too distracted with keeping the two villains back, allowing Namu to seize her. No, her sisters shouted, as worried gasps from their classmates accompanied it. Tamura meanwhile stalked freely towards the pair. Enough, I've had it with you, Tamura shouted almost crazily. Blossom flinched slightly at the outburst, but Tamura wasn't done as he chuckled slowly. Ridiculous, isn't it? H.M. You heroes do nothing but fight. Fight, fight, fight. The supposed good guys always resort to violence, and society glorifies them. But when a bad guy does it for the greater good of the world, they're villains. Blights of society. Society categorizes violence as either good or bad, when it's all violence. Tamura stopped walking, pausing before looking at all might with a sneer and the most powerful hero of them all. The great symbol of peace. That title means anything but peace. The title's nothing more than an oppressive force of glorified violence. And what does the pro-hero do with this title? Use it to incite more violence, to the point where little kids are risking their lives for the greater good. All Mike glared in indignation at the accusatory words. The words you're saying right now are preposterous. Heroes don't use violence because they want to. They use it for the greater good. Villains use violence for their own needs. That is the true difference between good and evil, Tamura. And, seeing as you are about to let your science experiment kill a little child, that further proves that you use violence for your amusement. Tamura narrowed his eyes. Bluff all you want, all might, but you can't deny the truth. I see right through your fake smiles and bold lies. Face it, I figured you out. Around them, students started to swarm around All Might. Todoroki and Kirishima abandoned Mojo, who was trapped in a large block of ice and squirming helplessly. Bakugu and Izuku stood beside All Might, looking furious and ready to attack. And Bubbles and Buttercup floated in midair, ready to back up their trapped sister if necessary. It's okay, All Might. We'll help you finish this. We outnumber them, Izuku exclaimed. All Might shook his head, to the shock of the students. Go. It's not safe for any of you. Even you, girls. He said, glancing at Bubbles and Buttercup. Leave this place, and I'll free Momoko as well as take care of the villains. 
Buttercup wasn't having it. Are you nuts? We got them on the ropes, and you're injured too. We're gonna help you. Kaoru's right. You need our help, and we're going to give it. Todoroki agreed with a nod. Come on, All Might, let us handle this, Izuku begged. Suddenly, All Might tore from the group, taking them by surprise. As they tried to follow, the force of All Might's lunge sent everyone stumbling back a few feet. He then headed right towards Namu, who still kept a hold on Blossom. As Blossom and All Might catch each other's eye, All Might shouts. On my mark, Momoko, use your strength and break free, he shouted. With wide eyes, Blossom frowned and nodded before looking down and thrusting her hands onto Namu's, which were wrapped around her midriff. As All Might ran, he started to speak to Tamira. If what you say is true, Tamira, and Namu can resist me at 100%, then I must go beyond my limits. I must go plus ultra. Tamira, catching on, quickly shouted at Kirijiri to stop him. But it was too late. All Might was coming in hot and was pumped up with power. Now, he shouted to Blossom. Quickly, Blossom pried Namu's hands apart in one rushed motion, sending Namu's arms flying out to its sides and allowing Blossom to plant her feet on it and push off, flying away in a pink blur and leaving Namu open for All Might. I admit it, I'm not as strong as I used to be, All Might declared as he got closer, but I have the fight left in me. One for all will always give me true power. And with plus ultra, I shall go beyond and push my limits. At those words, he stopped, sticking a hand up into the air before clutching it into a fist. He then pulled back, charging up the attack while shouting. Texas smash. Finally, All Might hits Namu head-on with a forceful punch, right in the middle of the X-Scar Blossom gave it. For a second, after the fist makes contact, Namu's body contracts with explosive pressure. Suddenly, Namu went flying, rocketing through the air and right through the dome ceiling, creating another explosion. After the wind died down from the punch, the students opened their eyes, and slowly, after seeing the sight, they cheered. It had finally happened. Namu was defeated. No, 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 Tamira shouted in rage. All Might lets his hand drop, standing still. As he pants heavily from the exertion, Blossom noticed that he was barely moving, which made her stop cheering. Wait, why isn't All Might moving? she asked. Slowly, other students noticed that, as most looked confused, Izuku looked like he had seen a ghost. He then mouthed something to himself that nobody noticed, except for Blossom. His limit. Blossom frowned at this. Limit. What limit? Perhaps she mistook what he said, considering that he wasn't whispering and was just mouthing. It's the end of the line for you, Tamira. You lost. All Might declared, locking his fearsome eyes on the villain. Once again, Tamira did that weird thing, where his hands went up to his neck and scratched vigorously. No, 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 it's all wrong. I was wrong. All Might is still as strong as he always was. Oh, we're doomed. Doomed, he wailed. Buttercup smirked at the sight. Ha, that's what the son of a bitch gets. Todoroki nodded before looking back at the stairs. It seems like our job here is done. All Might can take care of everything from here on out. Let's go and meet our class. Agreed. Kirishima sighed. As the group was starting to walk away though, Izuku stayed, which drew the eye of Blossom. Izuku, aren't you coming? She asked, prompting the others to slow down. He didn't answer the question as he kept staring at All Might and the villains. Mojo was off to the side, frozen and trapped, as he shouted. Hello, Mojo Jojo speaking. I'm still here and I'm trapped. Hello, he shouted. Meanwhile, Kirijiri came up beside Tamira and by the looks of his face was starting to realize something. Don't lose hope yet, Tamira. It appears that All Might was weakened from Namu's attacks. That punch may have taken the last of his energy. And the underlings, as I've seen, are beginning to recover from the attacks. The pro heroes also have yet to show up. We still have a chance if we attack now. Tamira mulled over the words, making All Might pale. Then slowly, Tamira grinned. You're right. And so together, Kirijiri and Tamira sprung towards the defenseless symbol of peace. As students looked on with shock, panic appeared on Izuku's face. And suddenly, in an act of desperation, Izuku used his quirk to blast away from his spot, putting himself right between All Might and the villains. 
With his legs broken, Izuku aimed a punch right at Kirijiri's weak spot, his neck brace. But, predicting the attack, Kirijiri makes a portal for Tamura to stick his hand through, making it appear right in front of Izuku's face. Additionally, Mojo broke free of his ice prison in that second and started to make his way over too, right towards All Might. You gotta be kidding, Blossom sighed exasperatedly. This caused Blossom to fly away from her spot in an effort to throw Mojo aside. As this all happened, it seemed like things were done for the good guys. That is, until two bullets rang out. One hit Tamira's hand, while the other grazed Mojo's helmet, making him duck in terror. As Blossom skidded to a stop, she looked confused. What just happened? Suddenly, she heard Bubbles squeal madly with delight as she hopped and pointed at the entrance. Look, look, I see Ida coming into the Usija, and oh my god, he brought pro heroes. Sure enough, a tide of people decked out in flashy outfits made their way into the building, and they were readying several attacks, as villains everywhere cowered in fear. It was true. After all this time, the fight was finally over for the bad guys. Help had arrived just in time. Almost two hours. That was the amount of time that Class 1A were trapped in the ice to buy villains. The amount of time the students spent fighting for their lives. All Might came in during the second hour, and near the end of that second hour, help arrived. It was honestly baffling how the pro heroes managed to clean up the mess so quickly. They helped out students still fighting villains, gathered the students up to send to their class, and wiped out the rest of the villains. So, when Tamura made the call to retreat and left with multiple bullets put in him by the pro hero Snipe, taking Kirijiri and Mojo with him, that was when it was confirmed that the fight was over. Once some pro heroes came over to the plaza, the first thing they did was go to All Might and Izuku, as both were injured. Without letting the group of students and the girls see the damage, the pro heroes sent them out to join their class. As they joined their class outside, they were greeted by the police force, the chief investigator of which, Naamasa Tsukachi, debriefed them. In other words, he told the class that All Might, Aizawa, 13, and Izuku would all be sent to the infirmary, but that there was nothing to worry about since none of them were in life-threatening conditions. Then, with everyone relieved and at ease, the police force sent them back to Yua High to gather their stuff and go home. The villains, meanwhile, they had a more stressful aftermath. Deep in the depths of Kamino City, inside what appeared to be an abandoned building, Tamira sat inside at a dusty bar top, crouching over the surface and groaning, partly because of his injuries but mostly because of their utter failure. Those hero wannabe bastards and their symbol of peace, he grumbled before slamming a fist on the bar top, managed to ruin our entire plan. What's more, he paused to let out an empty scoff. The information we got was wrong, master. All Might wasn't weakened at all. He was still fighting villains exactly like he used to in his glory days. I swear, if I get my hands on the idiot who gave us that info. On the wall to the left, a blank monitor sat, where a dark voice came out, interrupting Tamira. Ah, my dear Shigaraki, if only you would understand. I do believe our source was quite correct when saying that All Might had gotten weaker. By the way you described the fight to me. It seems as if it took almost everything out of the hero to defeat Namu. Your unfortunate bad luck isn't because of that. Perhaps you were overzealous. Just then, a low chuckle sounded, prompting Tamira to turn around. Leaning on the wall to the right was Mojo Jojo, who had discarded the broken suit for his normal villain wear. Even your boss agrees, Krusty. You ruined the mission. He taunted. Tamira visibly tightened his fist. You, of all people, have no right to talk. I mean, seriously. We take you in, and give you endless machinery and resources at your disposal. And three little girls manage to turn your armor into a bucket of bolts and screws. Tamura then sat up more, red eyes glinting evilly from behind his mask. Matter of fact, let's talk about those little girls. Namely, what kind of superhuman drugs they're on. You have told us nothing useful about these Wonder Girls or why you want to kill them or why they're so powerful. They nearly killed my Namu, and I'm sick of the fact that you would go on about your endless feats but would zip your lips before we even get a sliver of information about how you know those brats. Tamura. Kirjiri said firmly from his place on the other side of the bar, yellow eyes narrowing. That's enough. He is an ally. You should not be attacking him. Mojo Jojo nodded, clearly smug. Yes, 
listen to your purple friend. Before Tamura could reply, the dark voice spoke. Kirajiri is correct, Shigaraki. Arguing and deflecting the blame will get you nowhere. Tamura turned to the monitor, almost flinching. But, Master, I... I don't see how Mojo's motives concern you. The dark voice interrupted, making Tamira silent. He is quite a useful asset after all. He made us weapons and helped dear Dr. Yujiko design Namu. He had helped us a lot with this attack. I suggest you show him your respect. That includes his matters with the Wonder Girls. As Tamira seethed, Mojo Jojo smirked and bowed his head respectfully. Thank you, sir. Just then, a second voice spoke through the monitor. Speaking of Namu, where is it? Did you lose him during the attack? Kirajiri bowed his head as well. Regrettably, yes. We were not able to search for and recover the body due to arriving heroes. H.M., that's a shame. The second voice sighed, clearly disappointed. Yes, it is. As for the usage attack, the first voice said, There is no reason to worry. You'll get your next chance soon enough. Give it time, Tamira. But there is something you must do when waiting for that chance. Tamira perked up, almost eager. Yes? What is it, Master? Gather the villainous elite. You had slightly failed with gathering low-scale thugs. This time, recruit powerful villains, villains that are willing to put in the work. With the right resources, the right plans, and the right people, there is no doubt that you shall strike fear in the hearts of heroes and citizens alike the next time you attack. Do I make myself clear? Tamura was quiet for a few seconds before nodding. Crystal. Good. I look forward to our next chat. And with that, the monitor went silent, the call ending and leaving the bar in loud silence. Back at Yua High, and at Recovery Girl's office, Outside the door, the Powerpuff Girls stood in front of it, clearly nervous. After coming back to the school, they had changed back into their uniforms and were expected to go home for the day, along with the rest of their classmates. But the thought of walking back to their empty apartment and forgetting everything about today seemed incredibly impossible. Even for the girls' standards, where they can do anything impossible. The people resting in that office were people that saved their lives for the price of their well-being. They can't just leave without a thank you. Each of the girls were clutching something. Bubbles was clutching taco. Blossom was clutching flowers. Bubbles had rushed out of the school to the florist and back with a bouquet gift. And Buttercup was holding their bags. And they were all standing at the door and staring. Finally, Buttercup groaned. Are we just gonna stand here or what? Blossom put on a face of determination. No. We're going in. Bubbles, meanwhile, looked uneasy. Uh, I don't know. Are we even allowed to be here? Recovery Girl didn't really tell us she was allowing visitors. Buttercup scoffed. Bubs, they're just injured. It's not like they're prisoners of Alcatraz or something. We're not going to be scolded for visiting when the nurse office doesn't have designated visitor hours. Bubbles thought about it for a second before saying, I guess you have a point. Blossom nodded as well. All right then, what the heck? What are we waiting for? With that, Blossom walked over to the door, shifted the bouquet to another arm, and knocked on the door. A chirpy voice immediately answered. Come in. Buttercup smirked at Bubbles, who rolled her eyes with a smile, and the two sisters came up behind Blossom as she pushed the door open. Bright fluorescent lights filled their vision, a bright change from the electric light bulbs in the sunset-tinted hallway. The room smelled faintly of disinfectant and roses as the girls stepped inside. Despite being a nurse's office, the room looked eerily similar to a hospital room. Beds were situated along the left side of the wall, with curtains separating them. A window took up most of the front-facing wall, and to the upper right corner of the room, there was Recovery Girl's office space. In beds of their own were every one of the injured, Thirteen, Aizawa, and All Might. Only, Izuku was strangely absent. After they had entered, the girls were greeted by Recovery Girl, who was previously working at her desk. Ah, hello girls, you've come to visit, I gather? She asked with a friendly smile. Blossom offered up a sheepish smile, along with her sisters. Yeah, we just wanted to check up on everyone, if that's okay. Of course it is, honey. Although, I do have to inform you that All Might and Thirteen are not available to talk, as they're sleeping. And I'm afraid you have missed Midoriya. He just left with his injuries taken care of. 
The girls looked over at the empty bed. That explained Izuku's absence. That's okay. Blossom confirmed with a nod. We'll just say hello to Mr. Aizawa. At those words, someone in the bed closest to the window shifted. With a glance to each other, the girls rushed over, past an unconscious thirteen Blossom stopped to leave a flower, past a bed surrounded and hidden by curtains, presumably where All Might was resting, and knelt at the side of the last bed, where Aizawa laid. When they saw their teacher, the girls looked momentarily distressed. Aizawa was covered head to toe with bandages wrapped around his limbs. Even his face was covered with bandages. Bubbles squeaked. Oh no, did Mr. Aizawa turn into a zombie? Buttercup looked at Bubbles with bewilderment. Don't you mean mummy? Neither of you are correct. Blossom snapped. Mr. Aizawa's not dead, he's alive. Just then, Aizawa began to stir, drawing the attention of the girls. Huh? Who's there? Aizawa's muffled voice asked from behind the shell of bandages. Blossom touched Aizawa's hand, eyes growing sincere. It's us. Um, she stole a quick glance at Recovery Girl before saying, Momoko, Miyako, and Kaoru. Aizawa was quiet before saying, Don't you mean Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup? Immediately, the girls tensed at the mention of their real names. Their teacher had just revealed their true identities. With people around? People who had no idea. Don't freak out, girls. I know your secret. Recovery girl said, noticing the tense appearances of the girls. Completely forgetting about Aizawa, the girls whirled around, shocked. You know? Blossom asked, bewildered. How? I thought we were secretive with it, Buttercup gasped. Recovery girl chuckled at the sight of the shocked girls. Don't worry your little heads. You were. Nezu just happened to mention it to me. And either way, even then I would know. If I was clueless, I'd still think something's off when three girls managed to survive a full-scale villain attack or all of the other scary things Yua throws at you without a scratch. The girls looked at each other. Now that she mentioned it, it did seem reasonable that recovery girl knew. Especially as she continued speaking. As a matter of fact, I am the medical researcher on the research team developing a way to send you girls home. Which reminds me to tell you to come in tomorrow. I should check your medical compositions and see if they're similar to the body compositions of our universe. The girls blinked. Clearly they were not expecting this. Um, okay. Bubbles finally replied. Recovery girl smiled before heading towards the door. Now, don't mind me. I'm heading off to handle some things. When you leave, be sure to close the door behind you. Er, uh, we will, Buttercup exclaimed. And with that, Recovery Girl left the room, leaving the girls to stare at each other once again. Well, she seems nice, Bubbles chirped. Yeah, I guess it's fine that she knows. I mean, she's a little old lady who heals people. How can she harm us? Buttercup dismissed with a shrug. Blossom nodded. But now, her mind wasn't on Recovery Girl. It was on Aizawa, who had moved to sit up. I'm glad you're okay, Mr. Aizawa. We've been worried ever since help arrived. Buttercup grew serious. Yeah, and we never got to thank you, you know, for everything. Aizawa sighed. You don't have to. I'm just doing my job. It's my priority to keep you girls and your class safe. By the way, how's your wrist, Bubbles? Bubbles, having forgotten the fact that Tamira attempted to destroy her wrist, frowned before letting out an O oh, of realization and lifting up her hand. By now, the tiny scar she had received that went down to her finger was nothing more than a faint pink mark, and the discoloration of her skin was gone. It's fine. I'm all healed now, Bubbles remarked. Aizawa nodded, struggling slightly with the effort. Good. That was a risky move, you pushing that villain out of the way. But I'm glad you did. Otherwise your friend would end up in a worse spot. Bubbles frowned slightly. But I'm confused. How come Tamura's decay didn't work on me? Buttercup grinned. Because we're awesome. Or, Blossom said, giving Buttercup a stern look, because we're not like the people in this universe, and our genetic makeup is different from theirs? Yeah, that's what I said. Buttercup protested, because we're awesome. Aizawa was quiet for a moment before saying, I'm more than relieved that the quirk didn't work on you guys. But this isn't a matter to be entirely happy about. This is another display of unachievable power that you guys have. 
This will attract more attention towards you, I'm afraid. Buttercup put her head on her hands and sunk into Aizawa's bed. Man, it's like everything about us is going to attract attention. I bet if one of us dares to sneeze, it's going to land us on the national news. Blossom sighed. While that is an exaggeration, Buttercup has a point. It seems like no matter what we do, we're going to be noticeable. Especially since we're the youngest students ever at Yua, and known across Japan, and possibly the world, as the Wonder Girls. Aizawa thought about it before saying, Yes, I suppose you're right, but I do believe that you girls should still stay under the radar. We don't want that attention to grow, and have the villains focus on you more. It's a miracle they didn't seem to come for you when they had attacked the Aschi, which is what I initially assumed. The girls gave each other glances, conveying a worried expression, before Blossom spoke again. Actually, that's another reason we came here. We wanted to tell you that a guy from our world came here and joined the villain side. Aizawa appeared shocked by this, and if he didn't have the bandages on, the girls assumed that his eyebrows would be furrowed and his mouth parted slightly. Wait, what? he exclaimed, confused now. Blossom took a deep breath before saying, you remember Mojo Jojo, right? We told you and Mr. T Nazu about him back when we first met. Aizawa was quiet, thinking. The green monkey with the large brain, that one? Blossom nodded. Yes, that one. What we didn't tell you about the time we were sucked into your world was that Mojo was there too. He came into this universe with us, but we got separated. We had no idea where he was, or even if he was alive. That is, until he showed up during the Usch attack. We had to fight him in the Ruins Zone. He was more powerful than he was when we first fought him. Bubbles added. And he was bragging a lot about his new buddies. He got friendly with the villains, and now he's working for them. Or, in his words, manipulating them in his plan for world domination. Buttercup butted in. In the end, we were able to defeat him. Blossom continued before looking guilty, but... We left him. We thought the pro heroes would come and retrieve him. But then, he escaped and got to the central plaza, and he was able to leave with Kirijiri and Tamura. and now we don't know where he is, and... Aizawa put up a hand, silencing Blossom. That's all. This needs to sink in for me. Blossom deflated a little. Sorry. Aizawa shook his head. None of you girls have any reason to be sorry, but this would have been good to know ahead of time. Blossom groaned and let her head face plant into the mattress. I know, we should have told you. Aizawa still looked grave as he thought some more, silence filling the room for a few seconds. Then, he looked up. Tomorrow, I'll let Nezu know about Mojo. Other than that, there's not much we can do. We can ask pro heroes to keep an eye out for him on patrols. But as of right now, he's a free man, along with Tamura and Kurajiri. The girls looked worried as a foreboding tone filled the air. So, you're gonna capture Mojo? Bubbles asked. Aizawa nodded with no hesitation. We have to. Getting your monkey friend will take us another step closer to finding out what happened that brought you here and sending you girls home. But, do you know if the villains are going to strike again? Buttercup asked. Aizawa took longer to answer this question before replying with, I don't know. But, when they do, Yue will be prepared count on it. Two days later. After having that talk, the girls didn't feel as reassured when they had left for the night. While they were put at ease about everyone doing well after the Uschi incident, a brand new worry replaced it. Or rather, an old worry was growing. What originally seemed like a harmless enemy was now one of their biggest threats. Not at all because of his power, as the girls could easily wipe the floor with him. No, Mojo Jojo was a threat because of the secrets he could expose. It was clear that the villains that he was hanging around were not a friendly crowd. That especially became clear after their attempt to kill All Might. But due to that talk with Aizawa, the girls did realize that things could have been worse for them had the villains known about the girls' true nature. But it wasn't. Which meant that Mojo hadn't told them anything yet. The girls had no idea why. A possibility was that Mojo was trying to protect them, which was immediately discarded after they realized that Mojo was mainly there to kill them. A better one, however, was that Mojo was trying to stop the villains from exploiting the girls to keep the glory for himself. That one seemed more logical and especially in character for someone like Mojo. Either way, 
The point was that Mojo didn't reveal the secret to the villains. But it was only a matter of time before he did, whether it would be of his accord or the villains. And that could spell out very bad news for the girls. The girls weren't new with the idea of evil people exploiting them or tracking them down for their power. Many villains had tried to do it. They had gotten used to it. But these villains were new and never before seen. That made them more dangerous, which was why the girls were so worried. Because if they got a hold of their powers somehow and used it for their selfish goals without mercy, this reality would be doomed. And that wasn't an exaggeration. So, when Yua announced that school would be out for the next day, that despaired the girls. Because without a distraction such as hectic school schedules or friends, the thought consumed their thoughts and waking moments. During that whole day, the girls were in some sort of funk, and the fact that Aizawa didn't come to visit due to his injuries made things even worse somehow. The girls never thought it would happen in a million years, but they were starting to miss school. Thankfully, when the next day came, Yua opened once more. The mood was immediately brightened up in the temporary Powerpuff household as the girls zoomed around, getting ready and pulling on uniforms. As they ate a quick breakfast of eggs, sausage, and toast courtesy of Bubbles, Blossom turned on the TV. They had been checking the news for any mention of the Usch attack, and today's report on the MNB network did not disappoint. This is Kiyomi Himari, coming to you with breaking news. The news lady exclaimed, Recently, there had been an unprecedented attack against Japan's very own Yua High. During a school field trip, the students of Class 1A received a sudden surprise. When villains attacked their location, the unforeseen simulation joint, otherwise known as the Usta. The girls perked up. Immediately, they wolfed down the rest of their food and bounded over to the couch, which they squeezed onto. Oh, Buttercup, you're elbowing me, Bubbles yelped. Then, back off, you're invading my personal space, Buttercup grunted, leaning against the armrest of the couch. Will you two be quiet? Blossom hissed as she looked at the TV which showed a sight of the Usti. Our sources confirmed that the attack was premeditated, as the villains in question were plotting to kill All Might, who was rumored to be on the school trip. They had kept the students of Class 1A, which also happens to be the class of the famous Wonder Girls, hostage. But the students were able to fight them off until help arrived. Bubbles gasped. The Wonder Girls, that's us, that's us. Buttercup huffed. Geez, they're still calling us that. Would it kill them to say Powerpuff Girls? It's HHH, Blossom shushed her sisters. As of right now, 72 criminals have been apprehended, as released in a statement from Yusutafu's police department. However, the ringleader of the villains had escaped with a few others, and their whereabouts remain unknown. Casualties of the overall incident remain minor, with three pro heroes and a student nursing less severe injuries. But in the end, nobody was hurt. I'm Kiyomi Himari and this is your MNB News Report. As the news moved on to other topics, Blossom turned off the TV. 72 criminals, she whispered. Man, that's like a good quarter of Townsville, Buttercup remarked. That's good, though. Right, Bubbles asked hopefully. Blossom nodded, seemingly at ease. Yes, yes, that's good. That's almost all of the villain's workforce. Bubbles sighed. Phew. Just then, Blossom's Yua provided cell phone buzzed, prompting her to pick it up, look at it, and scream, making her sisters jump. Damn, what is it? Buttercup shouted. Blossom jumped up, panicking, grabbing her stuff. Oh, we're late. The train's leaving in ten minutes. Come on, girls, we're gonna have to book it. Bubbles and Buttercup looked at each other before scrambling for their things and running with Blossom out of their apartment. After a few minutes, they were able to catch the train if it weren't for their super speed. They would have never made it, and ride it all the way to Yua High. After getting off, they made their way into the school and towards their classroom. As they passed some students, they heard whispering, to their confusion. Suddenly, a random student pointed and hollered, a fake and weirdly childish accent. Who, would you look at that? It's the Wonder Girls. This prompted some people to laugh and caused the girls to react in different ways. Blossom's face turned red with embarrassment. Bubbles looked confused and hurt, and Buttercup looked furious. Hey, do we have a problem? Because if we got a problem, tell it to my face so that I can punch it, Buttercup shouted angrily. That was enough for the student to scurry away without another word. 
As students walked away, Bubbles looked around, holding Taco tighter. Soon, they started walking again. Why is everybody so mean all of a sudden, she asked. Blossom sighed, the red in her face turning back to its normal blush. I knew this would happen soon enough. People probably don't think we belong here. After all, we are the Wonder Girls, the youngest students ever to go to a super-powered high school. And we have been getting a lot of attention in the media. Buttercup stuck her hands in her pockets, giving withered glares to anyone who passed by and looked at them longer than two seconds. I don't give a single fuck if people hate us for being here. If they want to act all tough and mock us, I'll gladly kick their faces in, no problem, she grumbled. So, when the girls reached their classroom, their moods were a little soured from the experience. But, as soon as the door opened, they were instantly swarmed by their classmates. Momoko, hey, come talk to us. Hi, Miyako, we got something to show you. Yo, Kaoru, you're here just in time to see this. The girls looked at the crowd before turning to each other with small smiles. It sure was a good thing they didn't have to kick Class 1A's faces in. From that point on, the girls' morning was back to happy again. Students left and right raved about being on the news, congratulated the girls for helping defeat Namu, and simply talked about normal things. It was glorious. So, when it was time for class to start, the girls sat in their desks up front, perky and eager. When Aizawa walked in, everyone went completely silent, before bursting out into murmurs. Um, did a mummy replace our teacher? OMG, what happened to your face? Are those bandages? The girls looked around, confused at the confusion before realizing something. Since they had seen Aizawa more recently than the class, the girls knew about Aizawa's face cast, which, he mentioned, was supposed to be kept on for the time being. Class 1A however didn't know any of that. Aizawa quieted the murmurs with a simple raise of his hand. As much as I know you guys would love to ask about my face, Aizawa sighed, clearly over it even before he started talking. That will be none of your concern. My injuries are irrelevant, and there are more imperative topics to go over. Understood? The class was quiet before saying in unison, Understood. Good. Now, to the important matter. I would like to tell you that U.S. Annual Sports Festival is coming up very soon. At this, the class went into an excited uproar. Wait, sports festival. No way. It's here, right now. Once again, though, the girls were completely perplexed. Sports festival? What the hell is that? Buttercup asked, clueless. Is this some sort of school thing that homeschools can't do? If so, then I wish that the professor enrolled us in actual school. Bubbles sighed. Soon, the clamor quieted down, allowing Aizawa to explain. For those of you who do not know what that is, the UA Sports Festival is an annual event held by UA High School, where students from all grades and courses have the opportunity to showcase their abilities in different competitions. All students at UA are eligible to participate, as it is a great way to be scouted by pro-hero agencies looking for interns. Bubbles tilted her head. Hero agencies. But Blossom looked ecstatic. Hero agencies, I know those, those are companies that pro heroes run. Huh? Buttercup asked, completely bemused. I thought that pro heroes were heroes, not business entrepreneurs. Blossom rolled her eyes. Not those kinds of companies. In this world, hero agencies are owned by heroes and run by hires called sidekicks. They don't sell anything, they're just a group of heroes available to call on. They specialize in one of, or all, three saving categories, rescue, evacuation, and battle. Whenever a job needs a hero, police will contact agencies in that area so that a hero can come and help. It's how the business works. Buttercup and Bubbles stared at their sister, dumbfounded. We really need to get you off the computer, Buttercup sighed. After that, they focused back on Aizawa's talk with a class. And Ida had just raised his hand with a question, which he almost always does. Yes, Ida, Aizawa asked, even though his face was covered and he had no way of seeing him. I just wanted to know, sir, Ida replied, doing his stiff hand motions, isn't it too soon for a sports festival? The usch attack had just happened, and with the sports festival in the coming weeks, it seems like a lot. Couldn't we reschedule? At that, the class murmured, with a few others voicing their worries, Ida had a smart point. 
It did seem like too much, especially since the sports festival sounded huge. I do acknowledge all of your concern, truly, Aizawa answered, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The competition is far too important to cancel. It is one of the most viewed events in the world and a major opportunity for UA students to get scouted by professional hero agencies. Canceling such an event is not easy. The class looked nervous as a new tone of anticipation hung heavy in the air. The girls especially looked nervous. They had initially believed that the Usch attack would be the thing that gained them the most attention possible. But this sports festival, the most watched event of all time, easily took the cake. By participating in the sports festival, the girls would not just be watched by Japan, but the entire world. They would definitely draw a lot of attention. And with their feats on top of that, youngest UA students, youngest superhero high school students, child prodigies, the Wonder Girls, heck, everyone, no matter big or small, hero or civilian, good or evil, everyone would know who the three pint-sized supergirls were. And that thought was a little nerve-wracking. Oh, who were they kidding, very nerve-wracking. It was all the girls could think about as they went on with their day and went from class to class. And it didn't help matters when the bell rang and class let out for the end of the day. Because as soon as the door opened, the doorway was nearly flooded with students from other classes. What the hell? Buttercup exclaimed as she jumped back. Eek, there's so many people, Bubbles squeaked. Much like Bubbles and Buttercup, the class was equally shocked and spooked. But the other students didn't seem to care, still swarming the door and staring at them. What are they doing? Blossom asked, mostly to herself. Surprisingly, out of all of the people, Bakugu answered. Isn't it obvious? He snapped, glaring at the nearby students. They came here to scope out the competition. And who better to check out than the famous class who fought villains? If Blossom was planning on saying anything about that, Bakugu clearly didn't care to listen as he pushed to the front of the class won a crowd and shouted at the students gathered around. If none of you back away right now, I will make sure you get an explosion in your face, he screamed at them. This, shockingly, did nothing to scare the students away. If anything, they seemed to be growing bolder as looks of skepticism and dubiousness crossed most people's faces, which was weird considering that a simple scowl from Bakugu would send them running let alone a whole yelling threat. So, this is the famed Class 1A? One student asked, raising an eyebrow before chuckling. I have to say, I'm a bit underwhelmed. Bakugu growled. Know your place, loser. Be as underwhelmed as you want, but remember that I'm the one with better skills. Are you? Another student remarked, only the remark sounded more like mockery. Well, pardon us for thinking that any of us lowlives could compare. But wait. What about the clear rule that Yua has? The one that states. His fake clueless look dissolved into a glare. That anyone from the general department can be transferred to the hero department if they prove so. And, unfortunately for you, with the better skills, the opposite can happen to you. The guy stepped forward, prompting some other students to move out of the way so that he faced the entirety of Class 1A. So, Class 1A, that glorious fame you have isn't here to stay. Consider my warnings as a declaration of war. Class 1A looked clearly shocked at this, and so did the girls. Um, war is a very strong word, buddy. Sure you want to use it? Buttercup mumbled. I guess we're not the only ones taking this seriously, Blossom mused. But the crowd wasn't done yet, as the boy who called meeting Class 1A underwhelming stepped up too, his eyes flashing with barely contained anger. And don't you dare take these warnings lightly. We've seen how you act, and we've seen your arrogance. I can only pray that you all don't embarrass us and tarnish U.S. image. At this point, some students of class wanna started to get riled up out of indignation, and one of these students was Bubbles, who suddenly passed Taco to Buttercup and pushed to the front of the crowd, despite her sister's shouts to not go. She then stood in between the crowd and class 1A. Come on, guys, what's the problem? She exclaimed, widening her eyes. I know that we're all going to be competing against each other soon, but that doesn't mean we can't get along. Why can't we acknowledge each other as friendly rivals and not enemies? The crowd had quieted for a few seconds, leaving her sisters and class wanna to wonder if the speech really did work. But that ended quickly as the crowd bursted out into raucous laughter. Hear that, everyone? 
She wants us all to be happy and nice with each other, like in the fairy princess movies she watches. Another student cackled, using a childish voice to mock her. This made people laugh even harder. Bubbles slowly glared with a slight scowl, even though it was clear that she was holding back tears. That's not what I'm saying, she snapped. Look here, little girl, a fourth student piped up as she walked up to stand in front of Bubbles. This may look like a paradise compared to the middle school you should still be in. But believe it when I say that Yua isn't the type of school where everyone hugs and sings kumbaya. We're here to win, not make friends, and you and your sisters, definitely not a challenge in my book. So, do yourselves a favor and back out, okay? You're clearly not prepared for it, considering you're what, 10? After hearing the infuriating speech, Class 1 started to go into an uproar, ready to defend Bubbles. But she already beat them to the punch, as she levitated off the ground to be level to the laughing girl, who promptly stopped laughing as Bubbles seized her blazer and pulled her close. All right, you bully, listen here and listen good, Bubbles yelled as she leaned in. You want to keep on calling me little? You want to keep on teasing me and my sisters, calling us too young and calling us toddlers? Well, I've had it. She gripped the blazer tighter, while narrowing her eyes. You won't be laughing when these little girls end up winning the sports festival. We'll show you and all the people who've laughed at your terrible jokes. We can be heroes, no matter what you say. So keep on laughing and pretending that the little girls are so cute and tiny. Just remember that we got into UA for a reason and I'll make sure that we crush your dreams of winning the sports festival. With that, Bubbles finally let go and landed on the ground. The girl stared at her in disbelief before glaring back in anger and turning on her heels to briskly walk away. This prompted some of the crowd to disperse with reproachful glares at the class. And before long, everyone left. It was after that when Class 1 started to leave, each and every one of them thinking about the sports festival. Finally, Blossom and Buttercup came up to Bubbles, who looked a bit regretful. That was awesome, Bubbles. I'm impressed that you told them off, Buttercup complimented as she gave Bubbles her stuffy, before slowly smirking. I bet you learned from the best, huh? Me. But Blossom didn't look as happy, as she looked at Bubbles with concern. Hey, are you all right? That girl was saying some harsh things to you back there, she asked. Bubbles took a deep breath before nodding. I'm fine, but I do think she's right. Buttercup and Blossom were shocked to hear this. What? Bubbles quickly waved her hands, beckoning for her sisters to calm down. Not about everything, obviously. Most of her insults were stupid. But she was right about the fact that Yua isn't a place to make peace. People may be here to learn about being heroes, but they also want to show everyone that they have the guts to do so. If we want the teasing to stop, we need to put in work. We have to prove that we have what it takes, especially when the sports festival comes along. Blossom and Buttercup shared a glance, knowing that Bubbles was right. Slowly, Blossom put a hand on Bubbles's shoulder. You're right, we do. And I promise you, when the sports festival comes, we're going to prove to everyone that we're in U.S. top class for a reason. Like you said, I'll make sure that everyone respects the Powerpuff Girls long after the sports festival ends. Bubbles sniffed on the verge of tears. Really? Blossom nodded. Really? After being quiet for a while, Bubbles offered up a smile. Okay. Yeah. Buttercup looped an arm over Bubbles' shoulders. Now that's the spirit. And so, the girls finally set off to U.S. exit. As they left the school, each girl had resolution and determination inside of them. From now on, there will be no worries about Mojo and the villains. Their minds were now on the sports festival looming ever closer. And no matter what, one of them had to win. They were right in believing that the sports festival would lead to people hyper-focusing their expectations onto them. The festival starts in two weeks, and people were already talking about the Powerpuff Girls participating. Tides of reporters seemed to have pinpointed where the girls live and started to swarm their apartment complex with cameras and shouting. Eventually, Yua had to step in and ban any trespasser within 10 feet of the establishment. That solved it happening at home, but that didn't stop reporters from stalking the route the girls take to school every morning and catching them there. Eventually, the girls, tired of the news, resorted to flying to school. Every time they encountered a news reporter or a crowd of paparazzi, they were asked the same series of questions. Girls, 
How does it feel to be the most influential students in UA history? Are you prepared for what the sports festival might throw at you? Have you had an idea of what hero agency you want to intern for? Are you sure you can handle this renowned event at your young age? The questions and the cameras had gotten to a point where the girls were nervous to just go home due to the fear of being bombarded. But staying at school was also dreadful because school life wasn't much better. They were very well liked in class 1A. That was a fact. But for students outside of class 1A, they were a different story. Jealousy of the girls getting a lot of attention seemed to be getting to some of them. The girls face merciless taunts and mocking in the hallways that get bolder even when Buttercup threatens to beat them up. Some rumors were starting to spread among the school. A popular one was that the girls had cheated to get into Yua. How they did was still a particularly well-known topic students loved to get into. I heard that they come from a rich family, a student had said one time, and that they were put into this fancy classified program that gave them quirks galore. That's how they got the highest scores in the practical. Someone told me just yesterday that they were top-notch robots. That makes a lot of sense. Have you seen these girls flying? Another one said another time. Those theories, along with way more, made one thing clear for the girls. People really do have trouble believing that three 12-year-old girls could get into Yua using just their wits and powers that were beyond their control and understanding. It wasn't like these girls were freaks. Well, they didn't start out as freaks. They were normal girls, born like normal girls, and up until the age of five, lived like normal girls. How they got their powers was a mystery that even the professor, who researched the properties of them, didn't know, so it wasn't like the girls could debunk the theories with the truth. But these rumors? They were ridiculous. And honestly? Downright insulting. It had gotten to a point where class one of themselves would hear the rumors. But instead of joining in, they defended the girls. The girls were immensely relieved and grateful when they heard that from their classmates. After all, it was very encouraging whenever a classmate would stop to give them advice. Don't listen to those dummies, they have no idea what they're talking about, Hagakir exclaimed. You shouldn't pay attention to them. Their insults will only keep you down. Takoyami told them. What matters is that you keep on moving. It's what heroes do all the time, Kirishima encouraged. And so, that was exactly what the girls did. People really think that they don't belong. Then, they'll prove them wrong. They'll work hard, train hard, and make it all worth it when one of them gets first place in the festival. Every time they got the chance, the girls were training. Due to publicity issues and invasion of privacy, Yua had allowed them to train in Gym Gamma once again, just like they did all the way back when the entrance exam was coming up. While they did not know what the festival would throw at them, the girls set out to be prepared in all aspects. Offense, defense, stamina, endurance, just to name a few. They lifted weights, fought mock battles with each other, and took down fake targets made with balloons they bought. Additionally, the girls put their time into researching hero agencies. There were a lot of things they had to think about. Which aspect of hero work did they want to do? Which hero agencies are the most well-regarded? Which ones were obscure? Which hero agencies would be willing to take them in? Which ones wouldn't? But, at the end of each research session, their result was more or less the same. The girls had no idea what hero agency they wanted or which ones were more likely to accept them. There were so many choices. Would the girls be better off picking a random one? And that was considering the possibility that at least one of these hero agencies recommended them. What if none of them did? What if they're adamant on letting 12-year-old kids work for them? Taking the Powerpuff Girls in meant basically inviting news reporters and paparazzi to the hero agency. Would they be fine with the publicity? Or even worse, would they like it? Because if they did, that would mean that the hero agency only chose the girls for attention and nothing more. All these worries about the sports festival took up so many days and nights. It took up every waking moment. It was an important event after all. The whole thing was on par with the actual Olympics. So many eyes would be watching. There was a lot on the line. But on one fateful day, the girls decided to forget it all for a day of fun. Little did they know that their decision to leave the house would set off a chain of events that would lead them down a very familiar path, with very familiar faces. It was five days before the sports festival officially began. And of course, being a highly anticipated event, people left and right were buzzing about it. 
After all, U.S. Sports Festival was the most well-regarded festival out of the other Hero School's sports festivals. That day, Musatafu was hosting an open-air market fair in celebration of the approaching sports festival. Vendors everywhere were selling various kinds of things, special merch, street food, handmade goods, and many other things. It was a busy place, with a lot of people coming to check it out. And some of those people were the Powerpuff Girls. They originally weren't going to go. But Bubbles was insisting on it. Come on, guys, this may be the only time we'll ever get to see something like this when we're in this world. We gotta go, please, she had whined. The reason against going was pretty clear, the attention. But Bubbles had a fair point. This was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It wasn't every day that you got sucked into another world. And as U.S. Research Division still works on a way for the girls to be sent home, they might as well enjoy the sights when they can. So, Buttercup agreed and finally, after the two girls begged some more, Blossom reluctantly agreed. But Blossom had one condition. Don't show your face. The last thing we want is another spontaneous cue with Musatafu News broadcast. Fast forward to the girls walking into the plaza. As per Blossom's condition, the three had worn casual clothes with neutral tones this time. Apparently a big trigger for attention was the colors pink, blue, and green. With the addition of hats and sunglasses Blossom had to ditch her bow and bubbles had to ditch the pigtails, to their dismay. And given the fact that summer was around the corner, and that it was pleasantly hot, the girls didn't stand out in the slightest. As soon as they got inside, Bubbles raced straight for the tents, browsing in awe at the products. One particular tent she stopped by had custom-made jewelry. Hello, little girl. Interested in buying a U.A. charm bracelet? The vendor chirped. We have a special deal. Buy one, get two more at the additional price of one. Bubbles squealed before taking out her kitty-themed purse and taking out a handful of cash. I'll take them, she exclaimed. After taking the money, the lady gave her a round mahogany box with the bracelets inside. Thank you for the business. Come again, she said happily. Bubbles then ran towards her sisters, who were browsing another tent. Look, 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 I got us some Yua themed charm bracelets. Aren't they cool? Bubbles remarked as she opened the box. Blossom looked at her with her arms crossed, before glancing around and lowering her voice. Bubbles, you can't be throwing money at the first thing you see. Don't take the money that Yua gives you for granted, she chided. Buttercup rolled her eyes as she stuck her hands into her overall pockets. Well, what else are we supposed to do here? Just stand around, Buttercup pointed out. Before Blossom could respond, Bubbles chose that moment to squeal, as she spotted a booth with plushy versions of pro heroes. OMG, OMG, I'm definitely looking at that. With that, she grabbed Buttercup's wrist and pulled her along to the tent, while Blossom followed with a roll of her eyes and a smile. It was hard to be mad for long with Bubbles acting excited. As the day went on, the girls got multiple things. That included, but wasn't limited to, an all-might plushie, a midnight-themed choker, some sports festival-themed shirts, a 13-puffer jacket, a limited-edition art book of heroes, and many, many sticks of dango. For the first time in a while, the girls were having fun. And what's better was the fact that nobody recognized them. So, they were able to be carefree and joyful as they bought stuff from tents, played some games, and danced to live music. Soon, the girls had to leave for the day, as it was starting to become late evening and more people were coming for the nightly festivities. But as they left towards the exit, Bubbles spent too long gazing at tents as she walked, which caused her to bump into someone and fall to the ground. As soon as it happened, Blossom and Buttercup froze, as they watched Bubbles fall with wide eyes. The impact of her landing on the ground knocked off her sunglasses, revealing her very noticeable bright blue eyes. As Bubbles rubbed her head, she blinked up at the person, who had looked down with curious and surprised eyes. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Bubbles instantly apologized. I hadn't watched where I was going and... Suddenly, Bubbles shut up, as she realized that no disguise was hiding her face anymore. And even without her distinctive pigtails, anyone who's been watching the news could immediately recognize her. But the woman she ran into didn't seem to know her, or at least didn't show it. She lowered the purple and gold fan she held near her face, before giving a sweet smile. Don't worry, darling, she replied in a strange light and airy accent. Happens to the best of us. 
At this point, all three girls were speechless. They had expected the woman to scream with delight and recognition. Or, at the very least, cast a reproachful look, if she was one of the skeptical people that didn't like the girls. But that smile she gave, along with the seemingly clueless look in her eerily deep purple eyes, clearly showed that she had no knowledge of the girls. Just then, the woman extended a hand decorated with colorful gems and rings towards Bubbles, who simply stared with wide eyes. Now, let's get you up from there, she said in that same calming tone. Bubbles hesitated before slowly reaching a hand towards the woman and taking it. As she stood up, she started to take in the nice stranger. The woman was captivatingly beautiful. She was rather tall, with soft brown hair that fell to her shoulders. Markings that looked faintly like makeup decorated her bronze face, accentuating her purple eyes. She was dressed in silky robes that resembled that of a genie, in shades of purple and gold. Tattoos that resemble henna stretched down her arms, before ending at her wrist. At the sight of her, it was like the girls forgot how to speak. That, along with the urge to leave as soon as possible. There we are. I do apologize for not moving out of the way. I need to pay more attention to things. Sometimes, I live inside my own head too much, the woman said with a soft chuckle. Bubbles couldn't find a proper response, instead settling on a weirdly awkward smile. Erm, I, uh, she stammered, at a loss of words. The woman then let go of Bubbles' hands before picking up her fallen sunglasses. I believe these are yours, she asked, handing the glasses to Bubbles. Bubbles looked at the sunglasses, staring at them longer than she should have, before jumping slightly. Oh, um, yeah, they're mine, she quickly answered. As she took them, her fingertips met the woman's fingertips for a second. And in that split moment, a jolt of something raced through Bubbles. But after blinking, the feeling went away as if nothing was there. The woman didn't linger at all as she let go of the glasses. But Bubbles still stared, completely puzzled. I could have sworn I felt something. But before Bubbles could say a word, the woman chose that moment to walk away. As soon as she left, Blossom and Buttercup came up beside Bubbles all of them staring at the woman leaving. Well then, the lady said, you girls can go on with your evening. I wish you a good night. And also. She then turned her head to look behind her at the girls, before holding up and flashing open her fan. Good luck with the sports festival, she finished. At that, the girls' mouths dropped open. But before either of them could say anything, the woman turned around and disappeared into the bustling crowd. Once she fully left, Blossom was the first one to snap out of it, as she dragged her sisters away, viscerally annoyed. I can't believe this. There goes our cover. Can't go one day without being recognized, Blossom groaned before glancing at Bubbles. And Bubbles, put on those glasses unless you want more people to look at you. Slowly, Bubbles slid on the glasses before looking back. No sign of the woman was visible in the crowd. What a strange lady, she whispered. I know right, Buttercup sighed. Did you see all of the rings and tattoos on her? I bet she was a hippie or something. That doesn't matter. Blossom snapped. You guys should not be gawking at somebody like they're animals in a zoo. In fact, we should be grateful that she simply had the courtesy to not point us out for the whole fair to see. Bubbles frowned. I, I don't think that was courtesy. She seemed genuinely nice, and she wished us luck for the sports festival. Buttercup crossed her arms. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. But too bad we won't see her again. Now stop yapping. I can hear the mint chocolate chip machai calling my name. At those words, Bubbles briefly thought of telling her sisters about the zap she felt. But the enticing smell of the sweet treat tent snapped her out of her puzzled state. She shouldn't be thinking about some random lady, anyhow. Cookies and cream machais were way more important. Countdown to festival, two days. With a black marker and eraser in hand, Blossom was in the middle of changing the impromptu calendar counting down to the sports festival. She had been doing it ever since it had been announced, having gotten a mini whiteboard and posting the countdown for her and her sisters to see whenever they passed by it in their apartment. This time, she erased the words two days and updated it to match the current date. Countdown to festival, tomorrow. She took extra time to underline and accentuate the word tomorrow. It was an important word, after all. It confirmed the fact that today was technically Sports Festival Eve, as unofficially dubbed by Buttercup. 
Speaking of Buttercup, she was in the middle of doing push-ups one-handed and doing it with ease. I can't believe it, Buttercup gasped as she did the exercise. The festival's really tomorrow. Bubbles, meanwhile, was lifting weights that were as big as her head. Me neither, after all this time, she squealed. Did you know that there's gonna be all kinds of booths there like the fair we went to? That means more merchandise, more food, more games. More heroes too, Buttercup exclaimed as she finished her push-ups, and they'll all be watching us, it feels unreal. Blossom leaned on the kitchen counter, looking uneasy. They'll be watching us. She had known this since the beginning. She knew that famous heroes would be there, as they were looking for potential first years to hire as interns. But knowing that it was actually happening tomorrow made her feel a little sick. Everyone will be watching, watching her and her sisters. For the first time live. Not in random footage, but in actual live recordings. As she thought more of it, the tiny feeling of sickness escalated into a rattling feeling of nerves and slight distress. She didn't know what was going on with her. All Blossom knew was one thing. I need fresh air. So, Blossom quickly muttered that she was going on a walk. If her sisters were or weren't okay with that, she didn't know, as she went out the door before Bubbles or Buttercup could say anything. As she walked out into the night air and outside the building, Blossom instantly remembered. The news. But, as she looked around, there was a strange absence of news reporters and paparazzi. Perhaps it's because of them focusing on sports festival coverage or the fact that it was night that explained why they were missing. But of course, Blossom didn't want to take any chances and took to the skies. As the city of Musatafu grew tiny, Blossom soared through the open air in a pink flash. The city lights illuminated her path as she set off through the spanning urban area. At first, she didn't have a set destination to go to. But a specific building roof caught her eye, and she ended up going straight towards it. Slowly, she landed on the roof, almost losing the flip-flops on her feet. Blossom took in the sight of the roof. It all felt like a distant memory as she looked around. That was because it was one. After all, it had officially been a year since she and her sisters came into this world and landed on this very roof. Strangely, the crater was still there, a dip of steel and concrete standing out very noticeably on the otherwise bare and smooth roof. Blossom came up to it, going no further than the edge. She could recall the memory like it was yesterday. After all, it was such a vital moment. It was the reason why she was waiting for a sports festival hosted by the school she shouldn't even be at. Once she realized that, Blossom sat down at the very end of the roof, before pulling her knees to her chest and resting her chin on her legs, her hair, free from the bow and ponytail, she always wore it in, tousled around in the late spring breeze. She didn't know why she felt so overtaken by nerves to leave the apartment in the first place. Was she anxious? No, that was ridiculous. She doesn't have any reason to. At least, she shouldn't have any reason to. Why was she so nervous? She should be more confident in her skills, which she definitely is, right? She should. She's been a hero for seven years. She's been a hero since she was five. She had way more experience being a hero than all of her classmates combined. So then, why was she nervous about going up against those same people? The more she thought about it, the quicker Blossom concluded that she wasn't anxious about the people she was going up against. She was anxious about the fact that a lot was riding on this. Because there was a lot, mainly, the girl's reputation. This sports festival is one of the, possibly the only time that everyone would be witnessing the girls in action. Not in blurry and shaky footage or low-quality pictures, but live, whether it was in person or on the TV. The fact that it was live meant that this would be how people saw if the girls can actually live up to the title that the public gave to them. This would be how people can judge whether or not these girls displayed wonder in real time, without the help of some external source. Blossom made a promise to her sisters and herself that she will work to make sure that people see that wonder. That was why she had to win. Nice view, isn't it? A deep voice noted. Instinctively, Blossom nodded and said, yeah. But she quickly realized that someone had actually said that out loud and jumped incredibly high in fright. As she floated in the air and covered her face, she could hear the voice laugh. Not with cruelty, not with mockery, but with kindness. Sorry? Didn't mean to spook you, Momoko. 
Blossom slowly uncovered her face to see All Might standing on the ledge beside the spot she was once sitting in. Slowly, she landed, wide-eyed. All Might? W, what are you doing here? she asked. All Might crossed his arms, still looking at the view. I could ask you the same thing. Blossom flinched slightly. But then, she realized that the sentence wasn't accusing her. All Might had asked it in a calm, almost joking, manner, and once she connected the dots and concluded that All Might wasn't going to drag her to get punished for being out so late, Blossom relaxed. I, um, Blossom stammered, before sighing and sitting back down, I needed to think. All Might nodded in understanding. Let me guess, about the sports festival. Blossom paused before nodding. Yes. Gotcha. Don't blame you. Everyone's been stressing out about it. Even me, believe it or not. Blossom looked surprised at this. Really? All Might looked over for the first time. Of course, my favorite class, going against each other to win. I'm gonna be worrying and worrying about who I want to come out on top. Especially since I like all of you. Blossom blinked. She hasn't been giving much thought about her friends competing, mostly resolving to focus on her aiming to win. But the more she thought about it, the more she realized that her friends were going to be her opponents. Achako. Izuku, Tenya, Shoto, all of them. Which made that heavy pit in her stomach seemingly triple. Anyways, All Might continued, sitting down as well. I saw you flying off in a hurry on my nightly patrol. Thought I'd come to make sure you're not abandoning ship. Blossom let out a half-hearted chuckle before shaking her head. Nope, I'm here until the end. All Might smiled. Good. This event is a great way for you and your sisters to make yourself known. Not that you haven't done that already with the news coverage you get 247. Yeah, Blossom sighed. My sisters and I have been training a lot for it. Of course. And have faith that your preparation will come in handy. There's a lot that Yua has in store for the sports festival. But obviously, I'm not allowed to say. Blossom looked down. She predicted Yue would not reveal anything about the sports festival. They're always secretive with events like these. For a few minutes, the pair sat in comfortable silence, the sounds of cars and faint talking in the city below. After a while, All Might broke the silence. Momoko, I just want you to know that I'm a little concerned for you. Blossom tensed. Deep down, she expected All Might to bring this up. She's seen the way All Might looks at her when he thinks that she isn't looking. She knew that All Might had to have heard at least some of the rumors circulating around. It didn't make it any less jolting when he finally admitted it. What makes you say that? Blossom asked, feigning a look of cluelessness. All Might sighed. You and your sisters have been through a lot, especially in the past couple of weeks. Going from the Usti incident to learning about the sports festival. It's too much for anyone to handle, and with the public opinion on top of that. I fear that it may be impacting you more than you realize. Blossom looked at him, and she couldn't help but think that what he said wasn't the half of it. He wasn't aware that she didn't come from here. He wasn't aware that she wasn't going to be in this reality forever hopefully. He wasn't even aware that her name wasn't Momoko. And while she acknowledged that fact, Blossom felt a subtle feeling of guilt. Shouldn't he know this? He should know the truth, know about everything. And what better moment to tell him than now? when it's just the two of them with no one around to hear. But as Blossom opened her mouth, All Might chose that moment to talk again. I hope that I am mistaken when saying this. But if you are, just know that you're not alone. If you feel like you can't handle this, give you a the word and we'll take care of it. And even if you end up being too stressed to compete in the festival, you don't have to compete. I understand if you're too scared. This took Blossom for a loop. Scared? I'm not scared. Now, Blossom will admit that she was feeling some negative things at the moment, and that was mainly anxiety and guilt. But fear? Maybe of public opinion during and after the festival, but definitely not fear of losing. She knew her worth. She knew that she had enough power to ace this whole tournament. All Might should know that. He's seen what she and her sisters can do. They took on Inamu, and that was way scarier than this tournament will ever be. Blossom knew ultimately that All Might didn't mean his speech to sound patronizing and was trying to comfort her. But, in the end, he did seem to think in some way that Blossom and her sisters were too young for this. That didn't make her mad. 
If anything, it made Blossom's nerves dissipate when she truly realized that she needed to put that belittling rumor to rest. She needed to prove to All Might that he should not be thinking of her as helpless. Which is why Blossom stood up suddenly, making All Might confused. But before he could say anything, Blossom took her chance to talk. I appreciate your concern, All Might, but there is no need for it. I don't think I'm going to lose it. I'm more prepared than you realize. My sisters and I are more prepared than you realize. All Might nodded. Yes, I do not doubt that for a second. Blossom suddenly turned to look at All Might with fiery eyes. Then why question our resolve, HM? This isn't scary. We've been through a lot, you know that. A sports festival doesn't crack the top ten, and even before you are, uh, my sisters and I have been through a lot. We've worked hard to get to this point. And with all due respect, if you think I'm going to back down just because of a few nerves, you're very mistaken. After saying that, Blossom paused, mulling over her words. She meant every word she said, and yet she felt bad that it was said in a nearly yelling speech. This was the number one hero of this reality she was talking to. She should have a little more respect, right? But instead of looking angry or even shocked, All Might nodded in understanding as he stood up too. You're right, I understand. But I just want to ask you something. All Might said before his face grew serious. Are you ready? And I mean, really ready? Once you step into that stadium, everyone you see will be your rival. There are no teams, just you. Are you ready to face the people you call friends, and most importantly, triumph over them, regardless of what they feel? Blossom was quiet, staring at All Might with wide eyes. But despite the split-second pause, she answered confidently. Yes. No. All Might didn't reply to this, and for a moment, a flicker of pride and surprise crossed his face. But as he smiled, the emotion disappeared, and he put a firm hand on Blossom's shoulder. Okay then, Momoko. I wish you and your sisters the best of luck. Sincerely. Blossom blinked. Once again, that feeling of guilt washed over her. The fact that All Might was simply looking out for her and her sisters made Blossom feel as if she told a big lie. But the problem isn't the lie. It's the truth. Or lack thereof. She needed to tell him everything. He has more than proven that he deserved to know. That was why Blossom started to say, All Might, I need. But as she started talking, All Might had removed his hand and was now going to the edge of the roof. All right. I think we both need to go back home. It's nearly an hour before midnight and you need your rest for tomorrow. I will see you at the festival then. Goodbye. As her eyes widened, Blossom stumbled after him. All Might. All Might turned around, and for a moment, Blossom swore that he was surrounded by a misty white cloud. But it disappeared as soon as she blinked. Perhaps it was the moonlight. Yes, he asked, a bit of concern in his voice due to the sudden call. Blossom stopped walking. Now was her chance to tell him everything. And yet, the more she paused, the more she felt like she couldn't tell him. Not now, at least, with the time of night and the sports festival already taking up their minds. Another unmasked secret would add to the stress that Blossom was already carrying. So instead, she smiled softly and said, Thank you. I really do mean it when I say I appreciate everything you do for me and my sisters. All Might was quiet before smiling a little, his eyes heartfelt and sincere. Of course, Momoko, you don't deserve anything less. And with that, All Might dropped down from the roof ledge. Quickly, Blossom ran towards the ledge and looked down, only to find no sign of All Might below. She briefly wondered how he managed to sneak off so quickly, but admiration overshadowed it. She had decided on it. If her and her sisters ever got back home, Blossom wanted to make sure she was as compassionate and spirited as All Might. Maybe Townsville will see the Powerpuff Girls just like how this world sees All Might as symbols of peace, on Yua High School grounds. Hello everyone, this is Kiyomi Himari, and I am right here, right now, live, at the annual U.S. Sports Festival. The day was finally here. It was a bright and sunny day, and the official U.A. Sports Stadium was packed. Crowds of people moved in and out, excited and talkative. Many smoke fireworks exploded in the sky, and Yua flags waved in the air. And outside the stadium, a young woman with blonde hair and a charismatic smile held a microphone and stood in front of one of many news cameras, 
reporting for the Musutafu Broadcast Network. That's right, today, the renowned school event is in full swing, the weather's perfect, and conditions are suitable for the festival to go off without a hitch. Currently, people are saving their seats and exploring this amazing venue. But soon, they and you will get to experience students giving it their all at the festival live. Coming up will be the opening ceremony that will officially get things started. So until then, get ready and stay tuned. Meanwhile, past the crowded entrance, past the newly enhanced security system of pro heroes and police they did not want a repeat of the Usti incident obviously, and deep inside the stadium were the students of class one a changing in the waiting room. This time, instead of changing into their hero costumes, they wore something a little different, a dark blue athletic jacket with pants to match, which had the letters U.S. sprawled on the front in a bold white color. It was the official P uniform they had previously worn back when they did the quirk apprehension test, it was required that they wear it to prevent unfair advantages that their costumes could give them, as the regulators told them. And Bubbles was sad about it. Nuo, she whined as she pulled on the jacket over her black tank top. I wanted to wear my skirt shorts for the festival, and I wanted the heroes to admire our pretty costumes. Buttercup sighed as she looked herself over in a nearby mirror and fixed her hair in reality. She just combed her fingers through it to make it look both neat and messy. Yeah, I feel you. But hey, at least we got these. They look cool. She replied. Blossom meanwhile remained silent as she tied up her signature bow, this time tying it on her low ponytail instead of the top of her head. Her mind wasn't on the attire. She was more concerned about going out there into the stadium. The good news was that she didn't feel as nervous as last night. The bad news was that she still felt it, which equally distressed and annoyed her. She shouldn't be nervous. She was Blossom Utonium, fearless leader of the Powerpuff Girls, so to calm down, she repeated those two sentences like a mantra in her head. She only stopped when she saw Tenya coming into the waiting room, which drew everyone's eyes. I just confirmed with one of the regulators, he announced. We're about to go into the arena for the opening ceremony. Blossom took a deep breath while closing her eyes. The rest of her classmates looked equally as nervous. This was it. Once they walked out into the stadium, the sports festival would have officially kicked off, and there was no turning back. But as everyone started to go, a weird thing happened. Todoroki, who had previously been eyeing everyone silently with a dark look on his face, had placed himself in front of Izuku and judging by Izuku's confused reaction, he hadn't expected this. Before we go, I want to say something to you, Midoriya, he stated, for all of Class 1A to hear. Izuku frowned. Um, Todoroki, what? It is clear that I am stronger than you, Todoroki interrupted while narrowing his eyes, both in terms of skills and quirks, but you have the number one hero on your side. I hope you know that the advantage will not help you in the slightest. No matter what, I'm winning against you at the sports festival. At this, everyone looked at each other, all thinking the same thing. What is this about? Meanwhile, Izuku narrowed his eyes, not in contempt but in determination. This was a bit unlike him after all, he didn't seem like the confident type. He was more timid in nature. As the two stood off, it was clear that this confrontation was going to get worse, which was probably why Kirishima stepped up to stop it. Hey, why don't we all just calm down for a moment? No need to make threats or anything, Kirishima said in a slightly joking manner. Todoroki looked at Kirishima with fiery eyes, startling the latter. This doesn't concern you, he snapped before storming away in silent anger. As the class watched him leave, Kirishima frowned in indignation and started to walk after him. But Izuku was quick to stop him. It's okay, Kirishima. Don't go after him he said calmly, the same determined look on his face. Kirishima looked surprised at this. But he was harassing you. He called you weak. He's only being set on winning. Izuku reassured him, I don't blame him. I am too. We should all be. Todoroki is a strong classmate, I know that. Despite that, I'll still be aiming for the top, like you guys. Ader he said this, the class nodded and voiced their agreement. Meanwhile, the girls looked both impressed and the slightest bit intimidated. Looks like we're not the only people here to win, Bubbles mused. Blossom nodded. That's right, which is why we need to try hard too. You got that right, 
Buttercup agreed as she crossed her arms. Finally, after the minor setback, the class filed out and walked towards the exit of the hallway that led into the stadium. Once they entered the arena, a deafening cheer from the crowd seemed to swallow up any other sounds. As predicted, the stadium was packed. Crowds upon crowds were stuffed into rows of seats. There were various types of people in the crowds, die-hard UA fans, people with merch who had clearly gone on an intense shopping spree among the booths outside prior, and silent watching pro heroes. At the moment class won and arrived, other competing classes were appearing in the stadium. All were students with diverse quirks and appearances. Some were even new people the girls had never seen or met before. And they were all gathering in the middle, where a raised platform stood. Once everyone was gathered, a sudden loud and familiar voice echoed throughout the stadium. It's showtime, folks. As virtually everyone in the stadium clapped enthusiastically, the girls looked excited, especially Buttercup. Yo, that's present Mike. He's announcing for the festival? That's sick, she exclaimed, looking very happy. Oh, the hero from the entrance exam? It's been a while since I've seen him, Bubbles squealed. After she said that, the voice continued speaking. Hello everybody, welcome one and welcome all to the annual UA Sports Festival. Now, who's ready to rock? At this, the cheering became increasingly deafening, as the crowds rumbled and the students jumped and whooped. Now that's what I'm talking about, President Mike said excitedly. The event of the year is finally here, and to start us off with the opening ceremony, please welcome our chief referee, Midnight. As everyone cheered once more, a woman strutted onto the platform. She was a captivatingly beautiful lady, with naturally narrowed eyes and long black hair. What had to stand out the most about her, however, was her costume which happened to be a skin-tight revealing bodysuit. And to go with it were red whips which she carried in her hands. It was clearly an ensemble that was out of place for a high school event, and the students knew that, which was probably why they were staring in bewilderment at the pro heroine. Thanks, present Mike, I'll take it from here. Midnight said before turning to the crowd of students with a charming smile. Welcome students, congrats on making it to your very first sports festival. Hopefully, it will be a memorable event for you all. How about let's start with announcing which class you belong to, starting with the first class in the hero department. Midnight then pointed her whip weapon at the class one a group, who started to look around for who was going to announce them. Finally, Tenya stepped forward. We're class 1A, he declared. This was followed by both enthusiastic and respectful clapping from the crowd. And while some students clapped respectfully, others eyed the class with anger and borderline jealousy. After Tenya stepped back, a student from another class stepped up. Immediately, it was noticed that it was the same guy who warned class 1A not to embarrass everyone at the festival. We are class 1B, he shouted. Once again, people clapped, but not as enthusiastically as they did for Class 1A. Soon, others stepped up and announced their class, going from Class 1C all the way to Class 1K. Once the last student announced their class, silence fell and midnight continued. Okay, now, before we start with other matters, I want you to acknowledge this moment. Right now, you all stand before me as mere UA first years, and perhaps by the end of this festival, you will leave with the satisfaction of showing everyone that your skills excel beyond that of a first year. During this event, I want you to give it your all. Important people are watching your every move, and that is especially true for the pro heroes in the crowd. These could be your future bosses for when you do internships, and you gotta show them just how skilled you are during this tournament. Midnight paused, letting the words sink in for the students, who donned faces of passion and determination. Finally, after a while, she spoke again. Now that that's settled, let's move on to the student pledge. It's tradition that the student who received the most combat points in the entrance exam. It was a hard decision, with multiple people tying, but we came to a decision. It will be given by none other than Katsuki Bakugu of Class 1A. Let's see what he has to say. At this, everyone turned to Bakugu in shock. Meanwhile, Bakugu himself didn't seem to care less as he went up to the platform with a slight scowl on his face. As he got up and Midnight handed him a microphone, Blossom wondered what he was planning to say. Everyone else seemed to wonder that too as they fell silent and listened attentively. Bakugu was quiet before sighing and finally spoke into the mic, saying something that nobody expected. 
I just want everyone to know, he said in a monotone voice, I'm going to win over all of you losers. At this, a split second of loud silence fell over the stadium. But, as mentioned, that was only for a second. Shortly afterwards, it was broken by a loud and provoked uproar of boos and shouts. Bakugu, Tenya gasped, you cannot be saying these things. Why are you calling everyone losers? Buttercup was also angered as she shouted, and if you think your ass is winning this festival, you got another thing coming. Someone needs to knock you down a few pegs. Surprisingly, Bakugu didn't respond to the ensuing insults or criticism. Instead, he kept on his deadpan expression while he gave Midnight the microphone back and got off the platform. As he did, Blossom frowned. Bakugu was a hard person to figure out. But this moment was a clear sign of what he really thinks. And it shows that Bakugu, even though he came off as conceited, was dead serious. He was looking to win, and he did not care for anyone who stood in his way, no matter what his connection to them is. Blossom narrowed her eyes. She made a reminder inside her head to keep an eye on him. He could be a formidable rival to face. Meanwhile, Midnight nodded slowly. Bold, I like it. Well then, that concludes our very short student pledge. I'm not complaining, since now, we get to the fun part. After she said this, everyone fell silent, their minds immediately off Bakugu and on the first game of the festival. For our first event, Midnight continued, we have an obstacle race. The rules are simple. All 11 classes will start here inside the stadium and complete a 4-kilometer course that leads outside the stadium and back inside. Of course, the use of quirks is allowed. The only thing you can't do is leave the course, which will result in a disqualification. Bubbles looked excited. Ooh, a race, that sounds fun. Buttercup grinned at this. Ha, huh, a race is hardly worth the time. I thought there were supposed to be challenging games, not a simple race to the finish line. I bet I won't break a sweat. Blossom nodded as she raised an eyebrow. Buttercup did seem right. A race sounded simple. Too simple, if you ask her. But maybe she was looking too much into this. All right, if there are no questions, head on over to the corridor over there where you will start the race, Midnight concluded with a flourish. As she pointed in the direction of the entrance to a hallway inside the stadium, every student made their way over there. As they walked, Blossom looked at her sisters. Are you guys ready for this? she asked. Buttercup looked relaxed as she crossed her arms behind her head. Duh, the real question is are you ready? Blossom chuckled as she smirked. Ready as I'll ever be. But as she said this, she had a feeling that the statement rang hollow. She quickly pushed the feeling away. She needed to stop the growing seed of anxiety and doubt in her mind before it grew into something more distracting. She can't win if she doubted every move she made. Soon, everyone was inside the large room and had lined up at the line marked as the starting point. As people started to warm up, Blossom looked straight ahead. That is, until someone called her name. Hey, Momoko. At this, Blossom looked to see Ochako waving with a smile and thumbs up. Good luck, she mouthed. Blossom couldn't help but smile. Thanks, you too, she mouthed back. At that moment, the loudspeakers in the room turned on and present Mike's voice spoke. All right, y'all, the race will start in a few seconds. Y'all know the rules, and hopefully, you'll follow them. And remember, no teamwork and no cheaters. Blossom's eyes widened as she looked at her sisters. No teamwork. That meant Bubbles and Buttercup couldn't help her and she couldn't help them to win. Suddenly, All Might's question last night made sense. When he asked her if she was ready to fight against everyone, he meant everyone, including her sisters. Everyone around her was an opponent. She had figured that was the case, of course, but she still felt bad that her sisters would not be on her side this time. The only person Blossom could rely on was herself and only herself. Blossom then sighed and crouched into a running position. If that was the case, then so be it. Let's get started, Present Mike shouted before counting down. Five, four, three, two. Blossom glared defiantly, gritting her teeth. Let's do this. One, go, go, go. After he said this, a blaring alarm went off, which in turn set off a stampede of students towards the doorway. As they made it through the hallway that led outside to the course, the hallway became unbelievably crowded. 
What once used to be an uncrowded sight of the end beyond was now a vision filled with jostling P-uniforms and pushing arms. The obstacles hadn't even started yet, and there was already trouble. But Blossom was prepared. After crouching for a short moment, Blossom propelled herself up so that she was floating above everyone's heads. And without hesitation, she flew towards the end of the hallway past stunned students and blasted herself into the lead. And off we go. Y'all, Present Mike announced, we're starting off this race with a bang. So alright folks that's all for today. Stay tuned for part 5. Do subscribe, like and share for more such videos. Also check out the story and author Periwinkle Frog on fanfiction.net. Press the bell icon to be notified first on release. See you in the next video till then goodbye.